and uh, published it last August. So I'm going to run you through it. So vestibular rehabilitation, this is what I do in the clinic as well. So balance training, standing and walking components, and then there's an eye movement component training. So um, upwards of another about 50% or so, or even greater, of persons with MS have problems with visual tracking, visual eye movements. So part of this vestibular training is also to incorporate eye movement training and not just the balance component. So it's twofold. So the standing, and um, I'm going to have some pictures for you. Hopefully that came out a little bit better. But the, uh, the narrowing of base support, uh, firm and compliant surfaces, head movements, and dual tasking. That was the upright posture control balance training component. So um, I do have to give you um, insight here is that I did not get informed consent to use my kids' feet for these pictures. <laughs> Um, and thank goodness that smell doesn't come across on paper. <laughs> so here are the general components of narrowing that base support and making it more challenging for you. Number one is to bring the feet together. Number uh, two is to be partially heel toe. We're starting to narrow it even more. Where to where we get into that tandem stance that we all hate when we go in the clinic and we say, come on, go ahead and stand there and walk like that too. Okay, there's reasons why we do that. And I always uh, tell my patients and clients that, you know, I know that you're saying your internal monologue right now is saying, ah, oh, Jeff, I don't stand like this. Why are you having to do this? And it's because when there is a fall, when there's a loss of balance, there are many times it's going to happen. Split second, you're turning, your feet are narrow together, and you don't really even perceive that because you all of a sudden now are down, and you didn't know even where that came from. So this is the preconditioning, so that when you do get yourself in this position, you've been there, done that. You pre-train yourself so that for that split second, because you've been doing this for 30, 60 seconds at a time, eyes open, eyes closed, head turns, Boom, you're in and out, you didn't even know you were there. That's the goal, is so that you can be very functional and efficient in your movements to where you get in these positions, you've done this before because you've been training it. So compliance surfaces, some type of uh, foam surface, could be a pillow, could be a couch cushion, usually love seats are really nice, they have more compact uh, foam. And a caveat here too is when you are doing this at home, eventually, um, is that you're doing this in the corner of a room so that you are safe. This is not to be done in the middle of the room. Also, this has to be initiated by a skilled therapist, practitioner, that knows what he or she is doing, knows how to get you through the program and how to have you do this safely and effectively. Hi. So compliance surface, tilting, tilt surfaces, forward and back, side to side even more compliant, uh, trampoline. Um, and the walking component would be walking on command. So this is where I get to tell people what to do. I say, stop, start, walk backwards, turn. And this way, you are reacting. You are also possibly even tossing the ball while you're walking. And if you come in chewing gum, we'll keep that going. And we really want to work on that multitasking. So eye movement training would be the quick eye movements, uh, voluntary movements that you get assessed on as well. I try to have you improve that as well. We don't have hard evidence that the eye exercises at yet, at this time, are effective, uh, are effective in truly improving eye movement function. So hopefully that's to be proven in a couple of years or so, but it is um, part of the vestibular component that I have. So then uh, visual tracking, smooth pursuit, uh, smooth pursuit tracking, and then fixating on an object and turning the head and being able to fixate the vision at the same time. Many times that will be uh, increasing the fatigue as well as dizziness. And if I see that, this is a great component. It's basically what I see from you and you have difficulties with these tasks, we're going to use that as your treatment. So we had a fancy way of assessing the balance. This is called the Balance Master. It's a uh, Clackamas, uh, Oregon, Noracom, Inc. And uh, individuals were in a harness, maintained safety, but were uh, flexible, being able to move a bit. 
this surface here was able to tilt. That surface there was able to move. So it's in a half closet on a surface that's able to move. There's six conditions, eyes open, eyes closed. And you get to that sixth condition, you're standing, looking at an object that's moving, and on a surface that's moving. And it's called sway reference. It doesn't move uncontrollably. The more you move, the computer tells it to move at the same exact degrees per second. So that if you're visually dependent, and that surface is moving that you're looking at, you won't be able to pick that up. You now have proof, or I have proof, that you have difficulties integrating your sensory systems. And if you're having that, the results that we have from this study, early evidence that it can affect balance, positively, large effects, and extremely large effects for those that have balance and fatigue problems, improvements in fatigue, that self-perception of fatigue. And uh, disability dizziness as well was very, very much uh, improved. So as far as ambulation, uh, compensation, handheld assistive devices uh, are definitely uh, advisable if needed. Bracing, ankle flare orthoses, definitely uh, beneficial when you do have a severe foot drop in or uh, decreased knee control. And that's something you definitely want to talk uh, with your therapist as well as your physicians and your physician assistants and nurse practitioners to include everybody. <laughs> and electrical stimulation devices, I know there's been a lot of, of um, information out there about some of the walking devices that help with that. When it is indicated, it's very, very, very effective. However, when it's indicated, you have to make sure that you have an open communication with your practitioner what's going to be most effective. And motorized devices and transfer systems. If you're having difficulties with transfers, there are devices that can help you get from point A to point B here safely. It doesn't have to be manual.